Taking back control. If gals value taking back control of their lives, they ought to first acknowledge these two words belief and influence, that can confuse the personal direction and plans of a gal's journey in life. This is how players break a gal's inner strength and dominate their effortless behavior. Once the spirit is broken gals tend to avoid embracing self-awareness by not being accountable of their actions. When a gal embraces confidence without acknowledging these two word meanings, their life often gets off track with naughty girl roles. Just because a guy shows you attention, it doesn't mean he acknowledges a relationship comes with responsibility. When a guy looks for a gal to get out of embracing accountability and self-awareness for his actions. This means he wants her to value him as being influential to some cause or matter. This too means he wants her to value the cause or matter as a belief. And generally, this is when he takes control of her daily life. Once she values his opinion he then acknowledges having control over her beliefs, which influences her behavior. Only willpower and determination help to overcome dramatic circumstances once you have acknowledged the rigorous proof right before your eyes. This can be helpful information if he's a habitual liar, a thief, an abuser, or a killer to completely get out of the relationship. Otherwise, gals ought to avoid giving up personal direction and plans. Since players value putting brothers before whores, gals have no reason to be off track. Personal direction enables a better quality of care for kids and being a player, guy, or gal, means the kids will be put on the back burner. How to spot arrogance and lies in a relationship. Individuals who lie usually have an agenda, commitments, goals, or prior plans they just won't break. This may or may not include the commitments with an outside lover, female or male, commitments to friends or family, a goal that would get them acknowledgement with their group, and slash or goals they want to obtain before committing to a relationship. When a person gets puffed up with arrogance during conversations, generally it means they have an agenda. If they have a habit of boasting, ordinarily this means they have prior plans. If they exercise pride this means they have goals come first, and they may not want to get off track with naughty girl roles. When a person exercises haughtiness, they have prior commitments they just won't break. The agenda, commitments, goals, or prior plans can become negative or positive in either person's life. When one or both persons in a relationship can't or won't commit, either person may feel a sense of insecurity, and may be a jealous type. Jealous types can be controlled even with the small things. After that, the house of drama with excessive control can lead to violence. These guys and gals' spirits are often broken when they want to be right in a relationship. They too value getting a point across rather than the relationship itself. Controlling what you can and acknowledging when to just let go. Once either person in a relationship starts to put others before the relationship wholeheartedly, it means they have given up on the relationship working at all. This is when it's time to just let go. If this is the gal in a relationship keep in mind the Bible never states formally a gal needed to build trust, earn respect, or acknowledge the feelings and emotions of her spouse. Gals find it difficult to acknowledge the feelings and emotions in a deeper way than basics. Playgirl mentality to habitual habit dating multiple people at the same time is a habit of not being content with what you have. A routine behavior repeated regularly that occurs unconsciously. The process of an old habit exercises an excessive impulse that becomes uncontrollable. Once it becomes uncontrollable it's then habitual and thus a disorder. Overcoming denial of infidelity requires effort, and memories can linger onto the next relationship, etc. This can create chaos in a relationship and for individuals around. And the process by which new behavior can become automatic is through habit formation. To overcome the old behavior, learn new behavior overall this will change the formation of the habit. Dating multiple people is currently going unnoticed as habitual in persons exhibiting it, the world advocates for what is the here and now of any popular behavior. Favorable topics. What a good gal is to the guys I have talked to. 01. A gal cleans the house and cooks often. 02. A gal teaches the kids to respect their biological father. 03. A gal who remains undefiled from cancers and diseases. 04. A gal acknowledges displaying her youthful appearance. 05. A gal doesn't try to wear the pants. 06. A gal doesn't make her guy wear the dress. 07. A gal embraces her inner sophistication and strength. 08. A gal doesn't talk shade about her guy to family or friends. 09. A gal who will work to help pay the bills. 10. A gal doesn't run the streets drinking alcohol and smoking drugs. 11. A gal doesn't sit around the house eating too much getting a fat stomach, one who exercises daily. 12. A gal doesn't spend all the rainy day funds toward shopping. 13. A gal can read, is smart, and has more education than a high school diploma. 14. A gal with a good paying job. 15. A gal has respectable friends. 16. A gal dress respectably. 17. A gal that won't mess around with friends. 18. A gal is fruitful towards family and friends. 19. A gal who reads the Bible and takes it wholeheartedly. 20. A gal has respectable parents. What a good guy is to the gals I have talked to. 01. 
a guy has more education than a high school diploma. 02, a guy keeps enough money in his access to cover the daily date expenses. 03, a guy acknowledges bathing daily and dressing up with expensive cologne. 04, a guy acknowledges he doesn't need to be a player, just honor his stewardship. 05, a guy doesn't come home smelling like sex daily. 06, a guy doesn't hide his arrogance over his sensitive side. 07, a guy helps with responsibilities around the house daily. 08, a guy doesn't have another gal in the house soon as his gal leaves. 09, a guy doesn't date the babysitter. 10, a guy acknowledges being with a gal exercises his masculine side versus being with another guy. 11, a guy acknowledges his fair pay towards the bills. 12, a guy doesn't go out and buy the first junk car he can find, just to prove he has swag. 13, a guy doesn't look at every gal as a sex object. 14, a guy visualizes his gal as his rock and allows her to be his rock. 15, a guy doesn't beat on a gal. 16, a guy has respect for kids. 17, a guy doesn't force a gal to sleep with others outside the relationship. 18, a guy won't break his gal spirit. 19, a guy won't break the kids' spirits. 20, a guy doesn't sit around the house eating too much getting a fat stomach, one who exercises daily. Bottom line, no one is perfect and everyone can strive to do better. Ambition vs. Helpmate Gal God made Eva helpmate, he never considered whether this would include her career ambitions. Either determines a gal's direction or interests she values most. An ambitious gal has become of more value in this contemporary world. Eve is a companion and the ambitious gal is a partner, but both can become a wife and partner. Surprisingly an ambitious gal can become eternally single with self-centered pride. Try not to be a gal who is. 1. A criticizer she continually nitpicks critical things about people, and nothing a guy can do will ever satisfy her. A self-esteem ruiner. 2. A Debbie Downer she has reoccurring events happening in her life. Most of which are nightmares, therefore, everything sucks and she has been mistreated time and time again. A bitter date. 3. A doubter she isn't interested in anything that will last long term if you have to step out of your comfort zone to achieve it. So, she doubts anything will benefit you, but she rather steals someone else's accomplishments to stand superior over them. A hater of dreams and goals of another. 4. Indecisive she doesn't make responsible decisions or take a stand for what's right. But she wants credit for advice and answers to trivial encounters. A born date. 5. Materialistic she is only concerned about herself no matter the cost. A date won't appreciate anything. 6. Undesirable when she isn't the star of the show, the nicer you are to her the meaner she becomes. A self-centered and stubborn date. Avoid dating a guy who is. 1. A doubter he isn't interested in anything that will last long term if you have to step out of the comfort zone to achieve it. So, he doubts anything will benefit you, but he rather steals someone else's accomplishments to stand superior over them. A hater of dreams and goals of another. 2. A guy doesn't acknowledge his stewardship he is a cheap date who relies heavily on validating whether a gal is needy. A hustler type date. 3. A micromanager guy he is a control freak who critiques everything people do and say, nothing a gal can do will ever be good enough. A vibe ruiner. 4. A narcissistic guy who just had his heart broken, and he is still in love with the gal and denies it. But upon every impulse, his life still revolves around needing advice or opinions from her. A distant date. 5. An acknowledgeable player he never grows up and is self-centered and stubborn. He avoids commitments also the acknowledgement of an equal partnership, his mind is centered on Neverland. An annoying and arrogant date. 6. An ego-tripping guy he lacks empathy and sensitivity for true discernment all while appearing confident, educated, and successful. He will remind anyone of his achievements continually, he is a know-it-all guy who is always right and will shut anyone up just to prove a point. A self-esteem ruiner. Remember these responses can be reversed upon every impulse. Unfortunately, you will encounter guys who don't meet certain requirements, try to avoid ruining their self-esteem. Because a gal who waits for an eternal mate won't be indecisive. So don't let your self-worth be the extent of the story other people have it worse. Give to a charity to avoid greed if you have access to wealth. Acknowledge God's signs and wonders for finding an eternal mate, and then treat your mate with an equal partnership. And bugginess, self-centeredness, and stubbornness as an ambitious gal will only result in being eternally single. Indecisiveness to be indecisive is to lack the direction of destiny, or to be undecided about the correction of something. Even to lack sentimental thoughts about what you stand for in general. Most times indecisiveness is what prevents relationships from graduating into the marriage stages, while most of these couples appear outwardly on social networks. The issue with indecisiveness, according to the Bible you can't be outward and stand for truths. Or expect to remain in a marriage 25 years or longer when indecisiveness attracts dull partners, no one wants a spouse who won't stand for what they believe. 
Outwardly people tend to stand on any point that they think will make them appear diverse. Knowing well they have an agenda, to get what one wants no matter the cost. A cheater may avoid true discernment in situations, by basically not choosing long-term strategies. All this is what makes people appear arrogant, corny, or self-centered during conversations. It shouldn't be surprising more gals are asking for divorce than guys. Attracting dull partners isn't the only reason marriages are leading to divorce. Other reasons, adversity, arrogance, avoidance of stewardship, criticizer, ego tripping, doubter, downer, greed, materialistic nature, micromanager, narcissist, selfish pride, stubbornness, and undesirability. Not enough people are avoiding indecisiveness to change human health nor the system's corruption itself, and you can see this immensely in the world. Does being diverse mean you will overcome the adversity of most situations? Not necessarily when you represent more than one origin or orientation. Especially, if it is religion or sex when you can't give God the glory of having experienced the formality. Not being diverse can also mean being unwilling to change traditions that are unbearable to live by. But the key variable is to change according to moderation. To balance between the two extremes of heaven and hell. Deny, hide, or ignore the eternal maid. When you deny the eternal maid exists God set aside, you end up back in the dating cycle. When you ignore the eternal mate throughout the relationship, it creates confusion and disappointment. When you hide dirty deeds from the eternal mate throughout the relationship, it creates physical and verbal fights. If any of this starts at the beginning of the relationship it can result in breakups. Break UPS sometimes last an eternity, and neither of this is good when waiting for the marriage date. Furthermore, someone who wants to visualize their eternal mate achieve success rather than fail in life wouldn't deny, hide things from or ignore them. Dull guy or gal although dull can be considered a norm. Jane Doe or Joe Doe is commonly used in homicide to say a person doesn't have an identity. The average plain Jane or Joe means someone unwilling to cooperate in multiple positions or relations. Plain from a female sense is someone unwilling to initiate foreplay, also unlikely to go along with being a stripper or whore. And from a male sense someone who is unwilling to initiate foreplay, or unable to give his gal an orgasm. Also, in a male sense, he is classified as a three-minute or quickie type of guy. When one of the persons in a relationship can't move into multiple positions they too are classified as dull. What tends to happen, the person may have had weight gain or pain from injuries. However, just as sexual patterns get compared, paying a tab when asking someone out on a date also gets compared to being dull. If you prefer ethical values that come with religion, don't step out of that comfort zone for sin. Sex object initially it is a toy, an image, or something to lust after. There are multiple ways guys and gals can explore extra pleasure satisfaction, it doesn't have to be done outside a marriage. If a gal acknowledges a guy as needy, she also acknowledges him as vulnerable and weak. Gals ought not to advocate being a playgirl, using every guy like an object or she will end up broke and broken hearted every time she leaves the house. What is ego tripping? Self-importance with quick pace rhythm talk that involves self-centered behavior, occasionally stubborn pride. And generally, the attitude exhibits a temper tantrum to get what one wants. Check your man girl. Gals that cheat on their guy in local communities use the quote, girl check your man when another gal's guy checks them. Often they have social behavior and vocabulary inadequacy in their conduct. They may even lack long-term direction and goals. As a result, they rather not be vulnerable to correction coming from a male, and this is one exclusive reason why they cheat on their guy. In many cases, they are all over the place trying to date another gal's guy using random tactics, to make themselves look appealing and nice. But once he checks her, she doesn't find him attractive any longer, and then it turns into a bitter feud. It isn't about stepping out of your comfort zone to hinder progress in the current relationship. This is ego tripping and what most playgirls tend to do to avoid inadequate social issues. It is a part of the temper tantrum of getting one's way. If more gals learned words of wisdom, less destruction and violence would be going on in the streets. Using words of wisdom daily requires knowledge and proper etiquette to avoid ego checking situations. Formal observance of a person's appearance with regards to respect has been broken too long, to not want to change social patterns in local communities. So, beware of the ego-tripping attitude, it is what breaks up relationships all around the globe. And initially, it is best to avoid confrontations of any kind to put God's requests first. Class, a formal person who is elegant with dignity and grace, that is shown in their behavior and the way they dress. Femininity, also called girlishness, womanliness, or womanhood, is a set of attributes, behaviors, and roles generally associated with girls and women. Femininity is partially socially constructed, being made up of both socially defined and biologically created factors. This makes it distinct from the definition of the biological female sex, as both males and females can exhibit feminine traits. Traits traditionally cited as feminine include gentleness, empathy, and sensitivity, though traits associated with femininity vary depending on location and context, and are influenced by a variety of social and cultural factors. Gentlewoman, 
a gal is a good breeder, honorable from the family or social position. And a gal who is civilized and educated with an independent income, a personal servant, who is sensitive and well-mannered. Diva a distinguished female and the first among equals. Someone who has dignity, and is more likely to be recognized as embracing different but excellent class and style with prominence. Someone who tells it like it is with glam. Bougie vs. Diva typically bougainous or divinous is unique to a gal's confidence and style. It means a gal who wears aggressive clothes embodying inner sophistication and strength. Bougainous gets perceived as a manner of the walk which includes, feelings, ideas, and thoughts. Divinous gets perceived as decorative see-through, skin-tight, or short dressy styles of wearing fashion labels, and either style embraces coolness. Divinous with bougainous. The articulation of a bougie female is admiring and empowering, a gal who is proud of her subrace ethnicity. Her intent is to birth nations from the womb as a creator who admires being beautiful, graceful, and intelligent. A gal who believes there is no limit to being fearless and unique, she is acknowledged as an innovator. Therefore, she loves herself unconditionally all while being a stubborn mule focused on herself. She is aggressively and virtually heard though she acknowledges oppression but refuses to cuddle oppressors. Furthermore, she stands for ancestors who gave themselves for humanitarian reasons, a gal who knows what is true about her self-worth. Divas are bougie, but the true nature of embodying bougainess hasn't only been visualized with the wealthy black gals. Bougie divas have existed since the beginning of time throughout various ethnic backgrounds from ages 1 to 100, whether they were poor or rich. Divas are taught to embody bougainess at an early age even before becoming mature or wealthy. Gentlewomen are what most guys are seeking nowadays, not just a naughty girl or slut. The gentlewoman who embodies divaness, is more than likely a nice gal, and embracing diva or bougainess as a gentlewoman won't change the fact most gals are playgirls, this is whether they embrace divaness or not. The goal wasn't to change the game only the playgirl, turned down, rather than being turned up an entire lifetime it isn't healthy for anyone. Short dresses history. Archaeologists' history has identified clothes resembling mini skirts far back as 1390 to 1370 BC. Though the names and styles have changed multiple times since then. The oldest garment is found in the short woolen skirt with bronze ornaments worn by egged girl for her burial. Wearing dresses above the knees gets associated with being a call girl, escort worker, prostitute, side chick, stripper, whore, while embracing bougainous, diva, or playgirl mentality. Down low gals, some people still call them straight gals they wear their short dresses, so multiple sexual types can see. They are gals who still date guys. There are multiple reasons why gals wear short dresses, this book is not to target them in any way rather, to clarify the intent. Mainly to understand perspectives of short dresses and have gals change their evil ways. Materialistic gals mentality. While most materialistic gals pay bills or own homes. Some are known as gold digger gals, they are overly fastidious, to the point of becoming a hustler, dating guys to vainly extract money from them. And they may even strive to marry a guy with wealth. Most importantly materialistic gals like shopping but gifts are demanded in a sense. Whether the gifts come from other guys or not, they are motivated by the amount, things of quality, and lots of it. Just to name a few brand labels most materialistic gals prefer, Christian Louboutin, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Gucci, or Prada. They rather not rock a low-maintenance lifestyle, they believe it is beneath their self-worth and only the finest money can buy will do. They buy the finest to appear or give extravagant but elaborate presentation parties with family and friends. Most times the occasions are over-the-top anniversaries, birthdays, holidays, red carpet events, special groupings even weddings. Most materialistic gals have mastered the art of being seen all while posing for cameras or selfies. Some may wear weaves or have their stylists on redial, some go to the local spa for manicures and treat themselves to high-end restaurant savory meals. A materialistic gal may know all the highs and lows of getting gifts, but most of them form broken relationships surrounded by high expectations which often falls by the wayside once the guy sees she is self-centered and stubborn. Generally being materialistic does involve, aggressiveness, alcohol, arrogance, bullying, coercion, converting, controlling, death rituals, deceit, illegal drugs, down low, drunkenness, smoking illegal drugs, lies, manipulation, multiple sex partners, naughty behavior, excessive thoughts, nudity, physical fights, random sexual partners, sexual characters, theft, threesomes, and verbal cursing. The materialistic gals who are greedy continually ask God forgiveness while changing their evil ways. And acknowledge the difference between a living sacrifice and a sinful sacrifice, also reap where you have sown versus reaping where you haven't sown. Surprisingly, you don't need the unrighteous sinner's validation to wallow in the greed of material things. Just stop being greedy and spend money wisely because you will not avoid God's wrath of judgment. As a woman, your place is to take care of the home. This may require you to make a 25-year investment into owning a home or an empire. So you will need to create long-term goals to reach your accomplishments. 
but no matter the wealth a woman acquires, some will still cheat. The old covenant of the Bible in Proverbs 14:1 says every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Either way, it is best to avoid cheating, if you are a gal who doesn't set goals, you are going to attract a guy that makes short-term plans. Acknowledging the new covenant as partakers of the resurrection, marriage is not a necessity until after claiming the angel status. Ladies it is conditions and principles of the resurrection to control your sexual desires the benefits are endless. You as a gal cannot stand firm in decision making, just based on the short term. Short term goals are easy, and long term goals require effort. But if the short term works for you, by all means, keep doing what you do. Eventually, you will desire long term decision making because the kids may suffer more. If you don't stand firm on God's word, the empire or home isn't going to last. These are a couple of reasons a gal has to become trustworthy sex wise. I just got a future vision. The karma flips back and forth, say if people in 10 years had to move more versus staying put, due to climate change or wildfires, etc. You may have to become flexible while moving often, and others probably wouldn't have to make any adjustments. Short term decision making may then become the all. Either way, a gal's place is to upkeep the home. Whether you are going to marry or not, just choose wisely. Continuation of influence vs. Beliefs. Both affect a gal's authority over her behavior, direction in life, determination, self-control, and willpower. Influence is the process of producing effects on actions, behavior, opinions, etc., of another or others. Belief is confidence in the existence or truth, of something not immediately susceptible to rigorous proof. We all confuse these two meanings, both can become bad or good circumstances in life. If the influence isn't able to compare with activities, biblical knowledge, or educational resources it can be classified as bad influences. Oftentimes young gals are highly impacted by both and then become unable to take control over influences, and thus put their original beliefs aside. Although you fear conviction from family and friends, you ought to acknowledge the father would want you to remain an angel, not a stripper, a prostitute, thief, nor a whore. These characters involve sinful sacrifices, not living sacrifices. You must acknowledge the worse influences that can lead to this behavior. Once you have acknowledged the influences are bad, just simply step away from them. You cannot remain an angel in these circumstances, the father will be comparing your mental stability to see whether you are worthy of inheritance. Women are worthy of rewards, honors, and gifts. Proverbs 31 1031, the common way to lose rewards is not to earn them. Warfare love people. Warfare takes place during the transition from the physical death of hell on earth, to the spiritual life of heaven on earth. Warfare love plays a key role while drifting away from God. The warfare happens when anyone excessively rebels against God's message, and anything surrounding God warfare love people typically doesn't want to hear about. They immediately connect with evildoers communities, to honor the flesh in dramatic circumstances. Rather than acknowledge all things are heavenly in their lives to give God glory and honor. Signs of a warfare person, a constant affliction of others or self, and they value constant validation from evildoers communities, over clear advice from a believer. In most cases, they point the finger and hold grudges against their partner, and tear them down with unbelief in God. It is more likely they will control and dominate their partner after that, and devour souls with avoidance of admitting fault. Because they don't adjust to others' beliefs, they rather you adjust to theirs. Most of their relationships are built on envy, greed, and lust, in which they become blinded by envy and greed. They value comfort and strength from evil acts in one another, most times the evil acts determine further acceptance. The irrational concepts help form content with the other as an object of lustful desires. Unfortunately, they never seek to repair debt or relationships it is of no importance to them. Usually, they are on the receiving end of any bargaining with controlling, loud and pushy tactics. And they will terrorize others who don't agree with their tactics while making endless decisions surrounding fear. Although it is a huge ego boost for people who devour souls to date, random evildoers. Anyone who knows better ought to do better. Warfare people don't weigh their ideal weight, they are anxious and hostile forming a rapid movement that creates tension for others around. Due to the constant movement of irrational habitation, many warfare people die the final death decree without ever waiting on an eternal mate. We all have fallen short from the glory of God in some way or another. If you are a warfare person, change and an eternal mate are still possible. Graceful humble people immediately connect with righteous good works communities. Just stop, giving in to greed and lustful desires either creates recklessness. Subrace groups of the human race. The human race accounts for the entire body of people in the world while subraces only account for a fraction of a person's characteristics or identity. Subraces are used to verify ethnic backgrounds some include, African American, Caucasian, Chinese, Hispanic, and Indian. Sympathetically when a person talks about someone according to race, they are referring to a subrace background. 
Many people perceive it as offensive to talk about someone according to race however, most people need to overcome subrace racism rather than race racism, and all subraces exercise many forms of racism. Even after it has been confirmed there is only one human race, the race card continues to be a critical focal point. Most people still aren't visualizing the human race as a whole, and fortunately, this is the start of overcoming. Some may not be able to comprehend what it means to be a part of one human race. Others know what one human race mean but are too arrogant, ignorant, and selfish to change their passive thinking. Optimistically once you visualize the human race as a whole body of people, and the subrace as a fraction of a person's character or identity you can overcome anything. Nature and natural with the human race. A gal's ability to behave in the wrong manner derives from animals. If a gal's character shows an unfavorable or unforgivable nature it is linked to animals. When you classify behavior as a part of color or race, it doesn't justify the wrong actions. Example, Joe has hillbilly ways but Jane has ghetto ways, and it is by nature these ways exist and their natural ability to adapt to a hillbilly or ghetto lifestyle. Scientists have confirmed there is only one human race, and so you don't necessarily need to judge according to color or race. This is another way you create problems within communities. Having said that, when a gal eats more processed foods, of course, her nature will be more compatible with animal behavior. But when a gal eats more natural foods like green vegetables and fruits her character changes to a more concerned person for reality. All adults and kids should consume less meat to avoid excessive animal-like behavior. One serving size for each adult and teen, one half of serving size for kids is enough to not be consumed with animal-like behavior. If you are unsure what a serving size is. Limit meat portions to the size of your palm. Tip, what if cheaters was a part of the police department? People would then be forced to pay a fine every time they cheat on their spouses or go to jail. Just as regular fines don't resolve crimes, naughty girl roles will never permanently be resolved. All this to say a guy or gal doesn't want to walk down a tunnel to see light at the end, and after getting there their spouse turns the lights out, and once the lights are on again they're with another person. 